In an old myth, when they tell you that the king is ailing or the queen is ailing, it's a kind of shorthand for the earth itself is ailing. And our story really begins with this young man, Parsifal, brought into the presence uh, of an ailing king and lacking the language to unlock the door to his healing. And I think, as a culture, that is the place we are in right now. We know the land ails underneath us, but to some degree we have lost the capacity, we have lost the language, we've lost the listening, actually, to open up that relationship to healing. So the story of Parsifal is the slow and sometimes torturous move from seeing to beholding. A lot of its central ideas are, believe it or not, Islamic, not just Gaelic or Celtic. It's been a long migratory journey. And just like us these days, we're living long migratory journeys as lives. We're in two or three different places at the same time. The first thing that I did with the story of Parsifal was as an oral storyteller, I took it back out to the land. It was an act of piracy that for two years I did nothing but tell it round campfires up on the wilds of Dartmoor. And so my very language has been broken up by the sound of the screech owl and the breeze moving through it and the blue smoke from the fire. By the time I started to write the book, what I found coming out at the end of my pen was the broken orality that had been cultivated through this wider telling. So in other words, I took it to get cooked in the wild before I brought it onto the page. Because Rumi says, and if Rumi doesn't know who does, you know, learn things by heart because they die of cold on the page. My telling of it and my writing of it is focused on our relationship to the land, the notion that mythology is the heart of ecology, and that to get close to the presence of the Grail King is to get close to the presence of our own wound and the emphasis in myth that our genius and our wound are right next to each other. So this story for me is not a story that lives in here. We live now culturally in this story. This is a story of our times. This character Parsifal grows up in a house without a father because his father died on the Baghdad road. How contemporary do we want it to be? It's a story filled with women. Uh, one of the common mistakes about it is an assumption that this is all about guys in Camelot being uh, macho. And actually, all the way through, it is women with their feistiness, their mysticalness, and their unpredictability that help in a kind of difficult education for Parsifal. So he is finally in a position to be in the presence of the Grail King and he is so tempered he has the language to release the healing. There's this thing that the Aboriginal teachers talk about where the land starts to dream you. It's not just your dreaming. It's not just your intelligence. There is something deeply Aboriginal in it. And my own background, long before being a storyteller or a mythologist, is someone that 20 years ago put their ear to the ground and in my own befuddled way has tried to stay listening ever since. And the story of Snowy Tower is about our capacity to listen not just to wounded kings, not just to wounded queens, not just to the drama of our own life, but the deep emanations of the earth. <laughs>